Okay, let's start with running in place. Punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. Keep your weight forward. So your back heel <clears throat> is off the floor. You don't want to lean forward, that offers your face, but you want your weight forward so that you can move easily. And now we're gonna shuffle in a box. Keep your hands up, side, back, side, front, and then go the other way. Knees. Make sure that the, you keep the standing leg bent. Other side. steps and if you forgot to start to watch like I did start it now kicks front side back Okay, so that was six exercises. Run in place, punches, shuffle, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. 30 seconds each, two more times through, and then after you do it, come back and stretch. Okay, so once you've done your three sets times, three times through, reach up, reach over to one side. Other side. And straight up to the front. Reach for the floor. Keep your chin up. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch, both heels are on the floor. If you want more stretch, put this elbow inside your knee and push the knee open. Turn, stretch your hip flexor, make sure that your ankle is out past your knee, not tucked in here like this. Straighten up your legs. All my toes are facing in the same direction. My chin is up, my back is flat. I reach my chest toward my front knee. That stretches this hamstring. Also stretches this calf a little bit. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees out. Other side, grab your ankle. Make sure your chin is up. Down in the side stretch. And 
turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Toes all in that direction, chin up, back flat, chest to your knees, stretch your hamstring. And then have a seat. One foot out in front of you, pull the other foot across the knee. Okay, if you can tuck this foot and still keep your whole butt on the floor, do it. If you can't, if you have one side of your one hip up when you do that, keep the leg extended. Whichever knee is up, take the opposite elbow, put it outside the knee, and push the knee across. <clears throat> Other side. Okay, feet out. Make sure your chin is up and your toes are pointed up. If you roll your toes in, you're not getting much of a stretch. So chin is up, reach your elbows toward the floor. We're getting closer, still elbows to the floor. And bring your feet together and reach your hands as far out as they'll go. You don't want your toes pointed, toes should be pulled back Chin should be up, so you're not here, but you're here. Pull your feet in, heels are on the floor, rock back and forth. Then put your hands on the floor and straighten out your legs. Okay, so we're gonna start with squat lunge. When you do a lunge, you wanna make sure, I generally step back when I do a lunge, you can step forward if you want to, but I find it's easier to get myself in the proper position for this knee if I step back. You want your knee over your ankle. If you have your knee out here and your ankle tucked behind it, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So you want to step back here far enough that this is straight up and down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go squat, lunge, squat, lunge, squat, lunge, squat, lunge. Okay, then I'm going to have a seat. And I'm going to put my hands way up here, not back here behind my hips, but way up here in front of my hips, out far enough that they're not bumping into my body. Then I put my feet flat on the floor and lift my butt up in the air so my back is in tabletop. This is called tabletop. You're going to keep your feet where they are. You're not going to let your butt touch the floor. You're going to pull back to an L sit. So forward, lift your hips, and push them back. And the last one is called a sit out. Put yourself here, hands and feet are on the floor. It's not a plank like you would do a push up. My butt's way in the air. So I can pick one hand up, touch the opposite foot. The foot that I'm touching is going to shoot through the hole that I made when I picked my hand up. Then I bring it back and I go the other way. So we did squat lunge, we did tabletop to L-sit, and we did sit-outs. We did 30 seconds of each one, 
I want you to do one more set, 30 more seconds of each one. Okay, this month we're working on speed. This week we're working on explosive speed. So we're gonna do a drill with front kicks. So we're gonna start with front with uh, breaking down the front kick. We're gonna do a front leg kick. We're working on speed that one's closer to the target, it's faster. It may not be as powerful because you don't have as much rotation, but it's much faster. So you're gonna start here, you're gonna prop your knee comes up, you push out, knee in and down. You're hitting with the ball of your foot. If you're wearing shoes and you can't bend, you can hit with the bottom of your foot, but don't hit with your toes. Okay, we're gonna do 10 on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then ten on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then you're going to get a partner. So if there's somebody in your house who also takes karate, they're going to do this with you. If not, you're going to very politely beg someone in your house who doesn't take karate to do this drill with you. And they're going to get a target. And they're going to be somewhere around you. So you're going to start here in your guard stance. And they're going to call to you. And you're going to turn to them as fast as you can and kick with the front leg. Okay, so if they're there, you can't turn and kick with this leg. I want you to turn and kick with that one. I know that's not necessarily the fastest way to go, but I want you to be thinking the fastest way to get to a front leg front kick. Okay, so you start here, your partner calls you. They call from the back, turn, kick. They call from the side, turn, kick. They call from the back, turn, kick. From the front, turn, kick. Okay, so I want them to offer you about 20 different targets. Then I want you to do the same for them. Okay, even if they don't take karate, if they don't take karate, this is a perfect time for you to practice your front kick because you can talk to them about chamber, kick, re-chamber, set it down. You can practice with them what part of the foot hits the target. Okay, then once you've done that, your partner's gonna come back with you and they're gonna hold the target. And your response, your kick, comes in response to them holding out the target and them pulling the target away comes in response to your chamber. So you're gonna stand in your guard stance and your partner is gonna hold the target out. And as soon as you see the target out, you're gonna throw a front leg front kick. Well, as soon as they see your knee come up, they're gonna pull the, pat, the target out of the way. So the goal is to get from here to there before they can pull the target away, okay? So they can't just do this. They're gonna bring it up and when they see your knee come up, they try to pull it away. As soon as you see the target come up, you wanna make the kick happen as fast as you can. You wanna do 10 on each leg and then trade jobs with your partner. Okay, I'm gonna run through the first part of each one of the forms. White belts are doing basic form one. Um, beginners, orange and blue, are doing Chilsung Ilro. Advanced class, green belts, brown belts, red belts, are doing Pangon Edon. First degree black belts are doing Jintai. And second and third degree black belts are doing Chilsung Salo, Chilsung four. Okay, so we're gonna do the beginning of each form. And then this month, we're working on speed. So we're doing, we're, I'll teach you the first few moves of the form and then we're gonna work on a speed drill based on that. So if we're doing basic form one, we start here, you look to the left, left foot comes in, left hand comes up, chamber, left foot's gonna step back, turn and low block, step and punch. Then we go to the other side, look over your shoulder, right foot comes in, right hand comes up, right foot continues stepping, Low block, step and punch. Then we're gonna do the same thing coming forward. This is the foot, we're going that way. So left foot comes in, left hand comes up, low block, and three times step and punch. One, two, three. Okay, so we practiced all those moves and all those stances last week, and now we're putting them together. So I'll put them together, I'll do them this way, so if you've not done it before, you can follow along with me. One, two, one, two, one, 
two, three, four. Okay, so if you are a white belt or an orange belt, I want you to do that at least five times. Then once you've done that, we're gonna, this is something that I want you to do with it. We're working on speed, we're working on explosive speed. So if somebody throws a kick at me and I move really fast into that block and then I stand there and I think about it, I'm gonna get punched. So we're gonna do it by the phrase. So as soon as you see that attack coming, you just blow right into the whole phrase. You don't stand around and wait for another attack. You defend and attack. So each phrase is all the counts in one move. It's all one attacker. So the first one, somebody's coming from that way, we block punch. Then you look over your shoulder, you see another one coming, block punch. So I'm not moving any faster on each move than I did before, but what I'm doing is I'm taking out the space between the moves. So what I was doing before is I was going one and setting that move, setting, setting the stance, two and setting. So, but what I'm doing now is I'm taking out the space. I'm not going to take out the space between one phrase and the next, but I'm going to take out the spaces between the move in each phrase. So the first phrase goes there. So I'm going to do block punch. Then the second phrase goes in the other direction, block punch. And the third phrase is towards the front, block, punch, punch, punch. Okay. So I want you to put that whole phrase together as if somebody was attacking you and you were committing to the entire self-defense against that person so they're done and you can turn and look at the next person. So if you're a white belt, that's what you're practicing. You're practicing it until you can do it upside down, standing on your head with your eyes closed because we don't call them basic forms because they're easy. We call them basic forms because they're the basis that everything else you're gonna learn is built on. So it's, it's the building blocks. You've gotta be able to do these. Okay, then everybody else, we're gonna move on to Chilsung in a row. We practiced these moves last week as self-defense. Someone's coming from that side. You're going to look, chamber, block a roundhouse kick, turn your hips away, block a high strike, chamber, pull their hand down, chop the neck. Then you're gonna grab their head. And the knee that's in the back is gonna slam, you're gonna pull their head in and slam that knee into their face. Whichever knee is up, the other hand's gonna push them away and you're gonna throw two punches. Then we're gonna do the same thing going the other way. You look over your shoulder, you're gonna block. They're gonna come, as they're falling forward, they're gonna come over the top. So you're gonna block again, chamber, pull their hand down, chop the neck, grab their head, slam your back knee through their face. Whichever knee is up, the opposite hand pushes away and two punches. Okay, so I'll do it facing the other way too. One, two, one, two. Okay, I want you to do that at that speed, if this is your new form, at least five or six times, till you can do it confidently. And then we're gonna do the phrases, just like we did with basic form one. So as soon as that person attacks you, you are committing to the entire phrase as a self-defense. So you're exploding right through the whole, the whole move. It's like when a bomb goes off. It's not like a piece goes off and then a piece goes off. I mean, when you watch them take down a building, yes, they set the explosives so that one, each one sets off the next one. But right now you're thinking you're one bomb that goes, it goes off, boom, there's, there's no hesitation. So we're gonna go that way first and then the other way. Okay, so if you're an orange belt or a blue belt, at least five times through the self-defense like that. If you are in the advanced class, King on Edom, we did the beginning of this last week as a self-defense drill. Okay, and I'll do it facing both directions. You're gonna go left first, look, chamber, hands or knuckles together on your right hip, step, hands come across your chest, they're touching from wrist to elbow, block. Turn from the Korean cat stance to the Japanese cat stance. Uppercut, chamber, cup and saucer on your back hip. In this case, that's the left one, then the left knee comes up, and punch. And then same thing on the other side. Look, chamber, step, block. Turn and uppercut, 
hands chamber to your back hip, which is the right one. Right knee comes up and punch. And I'll do it facing this way so you can follow along. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so if that's a new form for you, just like I told the people who are learning basic form one at Chilsling Ilro, you need to do it a lot of times. It needs to be burned in. Once you've got it burned in, I want you to take it and I want you to put the phrases together. So somebody attacks and you defend an attack. Somebody attacks and you defend an attack. Okay, so at least five times through by the phrase after you've done it a bunch of times regularly. Okay, first degree black belts, your form is jinte or jinte do. Sometimes it's called jinte do. I'm not quite sure why it would be one or the other. Um, we start here. Hands are going to come to an X block on your right hip. Right foot's going to step in, and I'm not going to step out. Normally, I would step through a really wide circle or chassis if I wanted to come to triple chassis facing front, but I don't. This first stance is a close kneel, which is narrower than a triple chassis. So I'm going to start here, and remember, hands cup uh, X block to my right hip, step in. I'm going to step to a very narrow circle or chassis. So then I come to it a very low, uh, close kneel, blocking. Hands come up. Look over your left shoulder, spin. I'm gonna throw a crescent kick to block something coming at me from the back of the room and a low block. Okay, I cannot, if you can come from here and spin, but not chamber to your knee till it's facing the target, that's okay. But if you come from here, and you bring your knee up here. Wherever your knee comes up, that's where your target's, that's where your kick is gonna be. Which is why I don't bring my knee up till I've come around. So from here, I bring my hands up, I come around, crescent kick, low block. Then the next move is exactly like the first one, except I move the other foot to get there. Hands are gonna come back to, the, to X block on my right hip. This time the left foot comes in, comes back out, close knee on the block. Hands come up, pump front kick, land in circle or chassis, hands X block on your right hip, and double open hand high block. Okay, a detail here. When you do the front kick, you're starting here in a close kneel. You don't stand up and then pump kick. The pump comes from the floor. Okay, so I'll do it facing the other direction. One. Two, three, four. Okay, so I want you to do it five or six times like that. And then I want you to do it five or six times by the phrase, just like we did before. Okay, so make that, it's the black belt forms. There's some argument to be made that sort of like Basadai, your phrase is everything going in one direction because I'm blocking against this person, but while I'm here, the next person comes, and while I'm here, the next one comes. So you can make that three phrases, one phrase, two phrases, three phrases, or you can make it all one phrase, I don't care. But what I want you to do is I want you to practice that, decide where you're gonna put the phrases there. Once you're black belt, you own a lot more of the form and practice it like that, and then, Second and third degree black belts. We are doing Chilsung Solo, Chilsung number four. So I'm going to show you the beginning. Um, I can do it. I can explain it. I can't always do them together. So I'm going to do it facing you, and then I'm going to do it in my back to you. So we start here. We practice this block. It's a block for a front kick last week. So we start here. We look left. Hands come up. Block. Push it out of the way. Elbow. Hammer hammers, hammers. Okay, all those elbow, all those hammers, you're using the elbows too, but if I say elbow, hammer, elbow, we're, we're never gonna get, we're not gonna get there. Okay, then I'm gonna step back and I'm blocking high. Wrists are crossed, inside of your wrist is facing up. I don't know why, that's because I was told that's how to do it. Step back, right hand's gonna spear the throat, left one is open on top of it, step in and elbow. Then we do the same thing on the other side. 
Look, hands come up, block the front kick, pull it out of the way. Elbow, hammer. So it's gonna end with the hammer facing the front of the room. Then I'm gonna step back again with the, high, with the high block, drop my elbows, but this time I'm gonna throw two punches um, to the top of the pack and step in an elbow again. Okay, so then we'll do it the other way. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I messed myself up because I was like thinking to myself, I'm facing the wrong wall because it's because I was doing it backwards. Okay, so I want you to practice that. This is a very long form. We will, most of the other forms will finish in the first two months and then we have two months to like make them pretty. This is a long form. It's gonna take most of the cycle to learn it, but this is a pretty, it's got some hard techniques in it. It's very different from anything you've learned until this point. So spend some time with it. And if you have any questions, send me a video of whatever your question is and I'll try to answer it the same way. Okay, we're gonna do one self-defense from each level. <clears throat> we're working on speed this month. Self-defenses generally have multiple parts. They have the part where you're actually defending yourself from the grab, from the punch, from the choke. Then they have the part where you might be hitting back or controlling. And then there's a finishing move where you're finishing the other person off or controlling and finishing them off. Okay, so the white belt self-defense is just a handshake. White belt self-defenses are not necessarily done against someone who's threatening your life. They're done against someone who's being a nudge. Okay? So somebody's shaking your hand and they're squeezing too hard. They're just being a jerk. So you're going to take your fingers and you're going to put them, you're going to make a peace sign. Okay, I'm showing you on my wrist because I don't have another wrist over here to show you. But you're going to put your fingers over their wrist like this. And then you're going to turn so that your hand is palm up. So theirs is palm down. And then you're going to take your thumb and you're gonna put it against theirs and you're gonna squeeze like this and peel. Okay, so they, 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 they grab, you make the peace sign, you turn your hand, you put your hand on their thumb and you peel it. Okay, then you punch them and you get away. Normally in the adult program, we don't do one step, two step like we do with the kids. But like I said, this is some self-defense for somebody who's being nudged, not someone who's threatening your life. So you don't really wanna finish them off. You just wanna make them let go of your hand and get gone. So they shake. I'm going to step back a little bit and pull. There's a good chance at that point they'll let go, and then I won't have to do I won't have to do the thumb lock. But I'm going to step back, hand, peace sign over their wrist, turn my hand palm down, peel their thumb, punch, and get gone. Okay, that's a hard to practice in the air. It would be better if you if there's somebody in your house that you can practice with. Be conscious of not squeezing too hard. Go really slow when you do the twist and when you do the thumb lock. You gotta do this a million times before you understand as the person doing it where the hurt spot is, the pain spot for the person you're doing it to. So go way slower than you think you need to so they have a chance for the, sim the signal to get from this thumb that hurts all the way up to the brain and down the other arm to tap. This means it hurts, stop. If you do this and they don't stop, smack them upside the head, okay? Um, but practice that really slow. Then the one, the next one that we're going to do is from the beginner curriculum. It is um, a sodagari. So this is going to be a throw, but what we're working on this week is not going to hit. So someone throws a punch at your face. Get out of the way. That's the important part. That's the defense. The rest of it is attack. So I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to parry and I'm gonna slide in and slam. If they're the same height as me, I'm gonna slam my forearm into their throat. If they're much taller than me, I'm gonna take my hand and come up and grab their face. What you don't wanna do if they're taller than you is bring your arm down under theirs and hit their ribs because then their elbow's on top of your head, on top of your arm, and they're gonna elbow you in the side of the head. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. They're coming at me, I'm gonna get out of the way, block, parry, step in and slam. Okay, so what I did here is I got my head out of the way. Okay, that's really the self-defense. Then I'm setting myself up to do damage. And there will be a throw that we'll do later in the cycle too. Well, if you have somebody to throw, I don't have anybody to throw here, so I'll explain to you what we're doing. 
Um, but the important part of this, the most important part is to get out of the way. And then you're doing damage. If you do enough damage, you're not even going to have to throw them. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to get somebody to attack you. When they attack you, have them not throw a punch. Have them go this way. Because if they're punching off to the side of your head or over your head because they don't want to hit you in the face, you're not practicing anything. But if they go like this and you don't get your head out of the way, you get face palmed, well, you live. But you'll, you'll understand the next time you're supposed to move faster. So the person who's attacking is going to step forward with their right foot and palm strike towards your face, where your face actually is with their right hand. And you're going to get out of the way, block. Parry comes up underneath, back of your hand, and then step in and either ridge hand or forearm to the throat or grab a whole handful of face. So going this way again, get out of the way, block, parry, either ridge hand or handful of face. And I want you to get someone to attack you and I want you to do that 10 times. That's the important part. That part has to be really fast. Okay, next one we're doing is a keto knife. Somebody's coming at you with a knife. They're running at you, okay? What you don't want to do is reach for the knife. You're going to get hit. What you want to do is get out of the way. Okay, so knife's coming at me. I get out of the way. That's the self-defense. Okay, knife is coming at me. We're going to assume right now they have the knife in their right hand. I'm getting out of the way. Knife is coming at me. I'm getting out of the way. Knife is coming at me. I'm getting out of the way. So what I'm going to do now, they're coming at me. Um, with the knife in their right hand, I'm stepping out of the way and I'm just taking my left hand and dropping it over their arm and catching this part of their arm against my ribs and stepping back. So what happens to them is they're running in, I catch their arm and it swings them around. So the part that needs to happen fast is get out of the way. And while you get out of the way, you trap. So right foot's moving, they're attacking with the right hand. My right foot's getting out of the way, and my left hand is trapping. My right foot's getting out of the way, and my left hand is trapping. Okay, that's what I want you to practice with your partner. Have them come at you, they don't have to have a knife, it works just fine with your fingers. But if the person just does this and stops, this self-defense doesn't work. This self-defense is based on somebody running at you with a, with a blade or a spoon, I don't care, a pencil, pointy pencil. But it doesn't work if they just come here and stop. They have to be moving towards you. Okay? So, gups, you're going to practice that. Dons. We're doing 360 blocks. Okay? 360 is a circle. What you're doing here is you're just practicing being able to block something coming at you anywhere in that circle. So, if it comes to you on this side, which is my right side, you're going to block with your right hand comes to you on the left, you're blocking with your left hand. Technically, there's seven positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm not ever going to say to you, four. Uh, it's four up or down. Two. But I want you to understand that it's a continuum. It comes from one is up here, to seven is down here. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get, get in your fighting stance, and somebody attacks you. You're not reaching for whatever's coming at you. All you're doing is catching. So this works the most painlessly if they have a focus pad in their hand. And what the person who's attacking is not just doing this, okay? They're making circles. Okay, and don't have them go one, because then you get in a pattern and you know where it's coming. Mix them up. Okay, so what you stand here and as they attack, you catch catch you catch you catch okay so you're not leaning into anything you're not stepping you're not going anywhere you're waiting for it to come close to you and you're just catching it before it does so get your partner give them a focus pad or a small pillow if they have it hurts less than slamming the side of your arm into their arm especially if you miss and catch the bony part of their arm too but I want them to go at you for like a minute and then trade jobs okay chucks a lot of people think this is a really cool weapon. Uh, unfortunately, in Massachusetts, they're illegal and you can't walk around carrying them. However, if you have them in your car coming to karate class and you get stopped and you explain that you're going to karate class, you'll probably be okay. Put them in your bag. Okay, but we're going to start with a block. 
So you're going to start with them here and I'll show you facing you and explain what I'm doing. It's kind of easier if you're standing next to me. So I'll show you that way too. I can't really, if I turn my back, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to block to my shoulder. Okay. So if somebody throws a punch, I could actually be trapping the punch and pulling their hand away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hand and I'm going to drop it down. So this chuck is going to stay where it is. And this one's going to drop down. And then the one that's up is going to come down outside the other chuck underneath it outside and underneath my elbow and it's going to come to my shoulder. So if you're standing next to me, you keep your left hand up, drop your right hand. Left hand now is going to come outside and under the right chuck and outside and under the right elbow and it pulls back to the elbow. Okay. I don't know how much you can see if we do it this way, down, under and back. Okay. So you're going to do it in and out in and out 10 times, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then I want you to do 10 on the other side. That might take some figuring it out. It's the same deal. If I'm going to go the other way, the left hand comes down, right hand, which stays level, then comes under and outside the left hand, under and outside the left knee. I mean, elbow and back up to here. Okay. Then we're going to put that together. Whether you're a one chuck person or a two chuck person, you're all doing the same thing right now. So hold both pieces of the chuck in your hand and draw a number eight. Okay. Then take that eight and lay it on its side and then keep drawing it like it's an infinity sign sideways. Okay. Then you're going to let go one piece. You want to hold this as close to the string as possible. If you hold it out here, at some point, you're going to smack yourself in the face with the chucks. I'm not going to be sympathetic because I told you you're supposed to be holding them up here. Okay, so you're going to start here and you're going to do figure eights. You don't want big arm circles. The motion here is really just from your wrist. And the catch, if you try to catch it and reach for it, you're going to push it away. So all I'm doing, we, I think we practiced this last week when we did the overheads. The, the up and down strikes, you just open your hand and let it fall in. Same thing when you're doing a figure eight, I'm doing my figure eight and I just in and down as, so I'm going to go down to down inside, outside, inside, outside. And then as I'm coming inside again, I just stop and open my hand and catch. If your strings or chains are nice and short, you're going to catch them like this. If your strings and chains are really long, you're going to end up catching the string. You're better off getting short ones. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put those two things together. You're going to start here, shoulder, and then four figure eights. One, two, three, four, catch. And then bring it back to here. Other shoulder, dumb hand for most of you. Two, three, four, catch. Back to here. Right side. One, two, three, four, catch. Left side. One, two, three, four, catch. Okay, I want you to do that 10 sets. This is a set. Okay, so if you did all those with me, I think we just did four. So you got six more to do. If you didn't do all those with me, if you just stood here and watch, you got to start at number one. You need to do 10 of them. Okay. Gup sword form. This is my house sword. It's really short, so hopefully I don't take out the ceiling fan. Um, last week we practiced drawing your sword. We talked about how you need to have the business side facing up. You need to wrap your hands around so that when you draw, the blade comes out. So right now we're going to start the form. I'll do it facing you and then I'll do it with my back to you so that you can follow along with me. Okay, we practice this strike to the first, well, counts three, four, five are all exactly the same. We practiced those strikes last week. So we start here. I'm on my knees sword. If I had a scabbard, which I don't, and if you're a gup, you don't have a scabbard. Um, it's on your left hip, right hand comes up and down. Someone is coming straight at me. I'm going to grab my sword. I'm going to pick my right foot up so that I'm on my left knee and cut across the tackers coming from that side. I'm going to pick my feet up and block and rotate my hips and cut cross shoulder to hip. We practiced these strikes last week. 
Then I'm going to look over my shoulder and there's somebody else coming from that side. So I'm going to take my right foot, drag it straight back and block, and then rotate my hips and cut shoulder to hips. Third attacker is coming from the front. I'm not going to move my feet yet. I'm going to bring the sword up and then rotate my hips and cut. Okay, the, the cut comes in rotation because that's where power comes from. Okay, so I'm going to do this again, facing in the other direction. I start here. Can you see me in the... Okay, I start here. Grab the sword, right foot steps up, so you're on the left knee, cut straight across. First attacker comes from the left, block, rotate and punch. Second account, attacker comes from the right, look, block, rotate and punch. Third attacker is coming from the front of you. Look at them, block, rotate and punch. Okay, at least five times. Um, I want you to understand, I want you to visualize what you're hitting, okay? So somebody is trying to hit you with their sword. Your sword is here, so yours is gonna catch and slide down. If your sword is here, if it's here, it's not working as a block, it's gotta be here. And then your hips rotate so you strike at least five times through that. Okay, all the black belts are also doing a sword form. This one, as soon as you have your sword in a scabbard, I, I obviously don't, but you'll see why they're ex expecting, assuming that. Okay, so when I'm gonna start with the sword, it's in my scabbard. And I'm going to put my right hand on the sword here. And I got to, if it's in the scabbard, I got to make sure the business side is facing this side of me because it's going to start on my right. I'm going to bring the sword up and grab the scabbard with my left hand. Then I'm going to bring it to my left hip, push it down. I'm holding it there with the left hand on the scabbard. I bow. Then I'm going to just step forward with my right foot and draw the sword. It's exactly there like the gut form. Step forward and draw, okay? I still have a scabbard here though. So I'm gonna take the sword, swing it down, bring it here, and then I'm gonna drop my left knee to the floor and put my scabbard down. Sword is still up, protecting my head. Bring my feet together when I come up. Left hand comes here and grabs. Left foot's gonna step out, sword comes to my hip. I'm gonna move a little bit or I'm gonna hit the cabinet in the back. I'm gonna look over my right shoulder. It's tacker coming from the back. I'm going to let go of my left hand. Sword's going to sweep down to my right as my left foot comes in. Pull the sword up. Left foot steps to the back of the room, cut down. Sorry, right foot steps to the back of the room, you cut down. Look over my left shoulder. Someone's coming from the other side. Turn, cut. Step forward again. Turn, cut. I'm going to pull back to a cat stance. And then come forward to a crane stance. So I pull back to a cat stance, weights on my left leg, or 90% of my weights on my left leg. Then I'm gonna step onto my right leg and in a crane stance to step. Okay, so we'll do that again, facing the other direction. Sword is in the scabbard, business side facing your arm. Starts here, comes up, grab with the other hand. So if you if you have no sword, you gotta, if you get no scabbard, you gotta get both hands up here so you're not cutting yourself. But if you have your scabbard, your hand is down here on the scabbard, Put it onto your left hip and you bow. Step and draw. Swoop the sword down, right foot comes back in. Then you're gonna, you've got the scabbard in your left hand, you're gonna put your left knee down, put the scabbard down. Come back up, feet together, left hand grabs. Then left foot comes out and you pull the sword to your left hip. Attacker's coming from the back of you. Look over your right shoulder. Right hand sweeps the sword down as the left foot steps in. Don't hit the ceiling fan. Step forward with your right foot and strike. Look over your left shoulder. It's attacker coming from the other side. You're not switching your feet here. Just turn and strike. And then step with your right foot again and strike. Then I'm going to pull back to a cat stance and come forward to the crane stance. So that looks like I was here. It pulls back here and then forward there. Okay, so at least five times through that. I showed you in both directions, so you should be able to figure that out.